Hello there, sorry to interrupt you uh, halfway through the video like that, but I just want to stop you there and tell you something. Uh, so, I've been asked by many people to make a tutorial about the video that I've created last week. The drone lapse and hyperlapse video that I created. Thanks for sharing the love, really appreciate it. It's nice to know that your work is actually getting appreciated by people. A lot of people enjoy your work. Yeah, so thank you very much for that. So yeah, I am going to make a tutorial video on how I create drone maps on my Mavic Pro. So obviously this can be done in any drone. Any drone that has the ability to fly for at least 10 minutes, let's say, in the air. So. You got your Mavic Pro, your Mavic Air, you got your Inspire 2, Inspire 1, Fun, all the Phantom series, whatever drone that can fly more than 10 minutes. There's three important settings that you can use when you're doing a drone lapse or motion time lapse, mo motion drone lapse, whatever they want to call it. So the first one is the waypoint, the second one is the tap fly, the third one is the tripod mode. Now obviously you can fly the drone manually if you wanted to very slowly which is what going to happen if you're flying in tripod mode. So waypoint just a very quick explanation of how it works. You have location A and location B. So you go to location A you record that position and then you fly to location B we record that position again and then the drone will fly back to location A and when it goes back to location A the drones will automatically fly from location A to location B at the speed that you want it to so in the settings you will be able to control the speed that you want to fly at usually you want to keep the speed as slow as you can obviously the battery will run out quite soon so you need to plan your routes out frame your subject if you have movement then great if you don't have movement look for maybe cloud cloud is a good one so sometimes flying in windy weather is not the worst idea ever obviously not too windy if it's windy enough to see the cloud moving cloudy that, that sort of condition you're in for a winner you're gonna get some decent looking time lapse in the next settings that you can use is the tripod mode simple enough this one's a bit more tricky though because you can only fly either forward or sideways at a control speed third one is tap fly tap fly is very simple it's very easy it's very lazy in a way but it works so get it up in the air and you just tap fly you turn the speed right down to the lowest it possibly can before the dji go up update it used to be able to fly at one kilometers per hour since the update of the dji go 4 app now the minimum speed you can fly at is 3.6 kilometers per hour and that's too fast now the only thing about the tap fly is you can only fly on a straight line if you want to get that dramatic panning shots of the drone you won't be able to do it with the tap fly a bit about waypoint then so, so i addressed that earlier point a point b drones go back to the same locations when you are recording point a to point b you need to already think about how you fly you need to record the exact movement that you will, you want to capture the subject that you want to capture so everything will be recorded automatically in waypoint that's the beauty of the waypoint so it will go back to the first original location and it will then automatically fly as you record or capture button as the drone is automatically flying and doing its panning and flying all you do then is just keep pressing the button as many times as you can until you get that 120 frames so in 120 frames you usually will take roughly around 10 to 15 minutes depending on the shutter speed that you use if you're using fast shutter speed usually it's pretty instant if you're shooting a long exposure say one or two seconds be prepared for the whole process to be longer maybe you're looking at 20 minutes so without any further ado i will get into the action and i will show you the whole process of how it's done First things you want to do is to get the DJI Go app on. When you got it on, got your drone set up, 
go to menu go to picture mode once you're in picture mode you go to you want to do everything you want to record shoot everything in manual so it's also this is auto now you go to manual and then you adjust your settings based on the lighting of the condition so right now i want the shutter speed to be roughly around 100 to 1 my iso to be roughly the lower the better obviously so i am going to make it 100 on this occasion and so now bear in mind you are going to change some more settings in here just to check and make sure nice gadgets there cheers so you want to go to image photos set it to photos make sure the image size is changed to 16 16 to 9 if you can see it 16 to 9 so then you'll be able to get a perfect landscape shoot of the time lapse if not you can use photo 3 as well and that wouldn't be a huge difference so i'm gonna keep it at four to three for now and raw image you want to show everything in raw you don't want jpeg plus raw you want raw so you can edit everything in lightroom once you've done everything in lightroom you can then save it convert into jpeg and put it into premiere pro for video purposes and white balance you want to keep everything consistent as much as you can so i'm going to keep it at custom uh, keep it that warm tone color style i am going to keep it at dc light but this shouldn't matter too much i don't think this is only for video i think so let's get it started so you want to so the settings everything is set so now you're ready to go you will have to launch it so let's get it launched and let's go so now what you do is to find a perfect frame now you you want to frame your location so frame your angle the angle you want to shoot and for this on this occasion i am going to say that's too bright there so i don't want to go there i want to find a moving cloud so it looks perfectly right let's go higher so we can see all the moving cars and things like that once you get to a certain distance you stop and what i want to do is to tap flag in this occasion now bear in mind that flying at night it's impossible to capture it's impossible to use tap flight so you will have to use waypoint for that so waypoint is just basically right here waypoint and what you do is you set a new mission record one position fly to a second location and then you basically start taking pictures so in this occasion i am going to use tap fly now up the uh, iso up a little bit just a little bit more so now i am going to set the speed at one miles per second and i am just going to go tap fly ready to go and that's your drone starting and you just take the pictures snap away and you want to snap at least 120 to 150 frames per second so to once you got 120 to 150 frames per second, 120 to 150 frames, then you are done. 
So yeah, basically that's it. That's how you uh, make the drone laps. Um, now it's very sim very very important that you keep your drone always steady and no movement whatsoever, no left or right turn. Um, if you want to do some panning drone shots and things like that, you're gonna need to uh, use waypoint. That way, it will be more accurate than you trying to do it one step by one step. So I will show, I will try and show you or explain to you how to do the uh, the one with the waypoint where you're actually panning the drone. So you actually get some smooth, nice panning footage rather than just a simple. Uh, straight line shot but obviously you can also uh, if you want to make things very simple and easy you can basically just use um, video mode shoot in video and non-stop recording for say 10-20 minutes and you just basically speed it up uh, as fast as you can and as you are doing all the waypoints or tap fly that way sure you'll get some you still get some nice footage but equally when you're doing long exposure at night time it's impossible to get any shots like that so this is why the best way to do drone laps hyperlapse if, if you want to call it that way is to uh, shoot them in image all right so now that you've got all your photos you've done outdoor now it's time to get down to some editing so the two things you'll need is going to be the adobe lightroom Adobe Premiere Pro. The first thing you're going to do is to transport everything, all your pictures, all your images into your computer. You're going to need Lightroom to organize your files and putting all the files into one folder so you can edit everything easier in Lightroom and then you can batch export. Alright, let's bring up the computer screen and show you how I edit those photos and how I organize them. So presuming that you have got every single files and images transferred in your laptop or your computer, you are ready to edit. You will put them into one folder like that. You will put all your images into one folder and then you will open the Adobe Lightroom and then make sure that you go to library and you press import right here and then you go and find the files which is this one right here in your hard drive and then you press import on the right bo bottom right hand tab and then when it's done it should be in your library then you'll be ready to edit you go to develop so you select on one of that files that you want to edit change all your settings exposure contrast highlight shadow etc to fit whatever the style you want once you've done that, you will then copy this one, the first one you edit, you copy and then you will select all of them by pressing Ctrl A and then you will go to develop settings and then you will paste setting, press that one. I've already done it so I don't need to do it. So you paste setting and then it should take a while to load. So once that's done, you will then export them. So presuming you still have everything selected, you will then press export and then you put them into another folder probably best to put it into the same folder as you store your raw file and then you select the folder you want to then choose the best quality possible you can usually maximum 100 and then you press export and it will take a while to export so in this to in in this tutorial I am not going to show you the whole process of it exporting because I've already done it so once that's done you will close down Adobe Lightroom you won't need it anymore so now that you have exported all your images and you have done with Adobe Lightroom you want to open Adobe Premiere Pro and you want to open a new project and once you have opened the new project you go ahead and go to the file again and open press on import you want to select the first image and then you want to take image sequence and that's very important because that will read every single one of the images in that folder and it will put them into one tiny small sequence for you to edit otherwise it's going to be spaced out and it won't work so you transfer them into your timeline from here on the bottom left hand corner 
of the box you can transfer them into the timeline and then your footage will be there ready for you to edit so from here you will see that the footage is quite shaky so in which case what you're gonna do is first you are going to open you want to right click on this um, clip right here and then you want to click nest your nest sequence sequence once you know nest sequences you will then go to effects right here and you will search drop stabilizer and then you want to apply that onto your clip and from there your clip will take about two to three minutes maybe five minutes to complete in this purpose of the tutorial i won't wait any further so i will cancel that once you're done with that you pretty much do the same to every single one of the footage you have captured so from there you do the same you import you drag you import you drag you stabilize them and then you put them into sequence a series until you get something like that a compilation or it can be anything so that's pretty much it so get out there and enjoy it guys go out there and shoot and enjoy your time lapse from here i will leave you at that and i hope you go outside and enjoy your shoot all right that's it guys so hit that like button if you like what you see comment on the comment section below if you have any questions at all any questions i will do my best to answer them and subscribe if you haven't already yet and maybe just maybe now nah, seriously i will see you on the next video seriously i will see you in the next video all right